Hello everybody, my name is Tasman and welcome back to another NZ Wild Adventure. So just hunting in Canterbury again, just walked in about 8km to a hut and then I'm just going to do day trips from there. Uh, weather forecast isn't fantastic. <laughs> I think it's going raining tonight and tomorrow morning, but we'll see, it keeps changing. So uh, yeah, hopefully get into a deer, chamois or, or a tar, maybe even a pig. Um, there's not that much like activity in the hut book, so we'll see what we can get. Yeah, so it's now 6 o'clock, so just heading up this hill and we'll see what we see. Up the hill! Maybe a pig or deer. Maybe a little chubby, I don't really know. Bit of rain coming on. Well, I made it about 20 minutes up the hill to a good glassing spot. The theory is if they start running they'll be easier to spot. Well, I just spotted the first animal of the trip. It's a pig, maybe about 25 kilos or something. I'll get the big camera on it and we'll see how we'll have a look. Looks about 700 or 800 meters away at the moment. So it looks a bit like a mum and pig and about three or four piglets. Um, and those piglets are looking pretty succulent. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are sort of across a bit of a sea of Mutagari. So uh, I'll get a bit closer and see what we feel like doing. <laughs> Some thick tussock. Well, the wind sort of died back and done a bit of a 180, so hopefully it'll be alright. <laughs> but we're on their side now, about 700 metres away, so I'll, I will see if I can get a bit closer uh, and get one of the piglets. Disgusting. It's a dark cloud. <laughs> I'm now 550 meters away from them. Did I mention the sea of Matagari? Well, the wind is going exactly the wrong way, but we'll still walk up on them and see what they do. That was somewhat anticlimactic. Uh, <laughs> got within a couple of meters of some of the piglets, but they were just in the short Matagari and they're just completely invisible. I'm not sure how much you saw in the makeshift uh, GoPro, <laughs> but I, I did what I could. But uh, yeah, so they've just like run into this little gully and they're not coming out. <laughs> I'll wait around for a bit longer, but it looks like the rain's really coming in now. So I'll probably just head back. But uh, it's a cool little stalk. I got really hot and sweaty and disgusting. Just gotta get through this Medigari and then go down that ridge, I think. In case you're wondering, I do have a raincoat, but I just get way too sweaty in it. So the umbrella's way good because I can just wear shorts and t-shirt, particularly in the summer anyway. The raincoat's just disgusting. Time for a spot of tea. There's a few other people doing the tea uh, in the hut and it's nine o'clock but they're already in bed so I decided to do it outside uh, just so it wouldn't make so much noise. So it's now 8.30. It looks quite claggy. So I'm just going to walk along the flats to the next hut and walk up valley from there. But it looks like there's a nicer valley to walk up, uh, which is lower in altitude. So we'll see what we can do. It's a lovely morning. It's not rainy. It's just quite claggy. Hopefully it clears up a bit later. Up the hill. New hunting ground. Right, I think I'll just walk around to that point. Have a good, good long glass. I just spotted the first big game on the trip, a uh, chamois maybe a kilometre away. Uh, it looks a bit like a nanny, but I'll get a bit closer to see what it looks like. If it's a nanny I won't shoot it because they should have uh, kids at the moment. He's just there, so the stalk would either be over to there or down on the valley up to that point. Pretty sure the wind's going that way though, and that's still quite far away from him. 
just I'll spot another chamois. It's it's much closer. It's hard to get a like. It's hard to know what it is though because uh, it's quite a lot of heat shimmer. But it's just up in those rocks there. The other one is down down there. And that one's sort of motoring up the hill. This one's sort of going slightly left a bit. The wind's going that way though. <laughs> well, the one up above me looks like it might be a young buck, but. I don't know, it's really hard to tell with the heat shimmer and looking through the viewfinder of the camera. Um, but he's only 500 metres away, so I might heat up the ridge, try to get a bit closer, see what it looks like. Would be nice to have some meat. Wind's sort of going that way, so I guess I'll walk to that rock and then walk up there, because he should be just behind that big pointy triangle rock. I cocked that up. <laughs> I was just walking up the hill, the wind wasn't great so I kind of thought he'd smelled me already and I thought he was still moving but he must have just sped it down on top of that rock uh, because I was I got to that rock then I walked down on that side of the rock and then up and then maybe five meters away he burst out and ran off that way. Pointy triangle rock. So I think I might head up here and then cut across to a saddle across there and then I have another look down on that other chamois. Yeah so the other chamois is down there. But I'll see if there's any other game up here. Just spotted three deer. <laughs> Very pleased with that. I always like sea animals. They're about maybe 1.2 kilometers away in the valley. Maybe a tricky stalk, but uh, the deer are there in the valley. So what I'll do is I'll get the big camera on them, see if there's a, a spiker or a stag with them. Uh, and then if there is, heat up the valley and then cut down the back of them because I'm pretty sure the wind's going up the valley. Yeah, so it was pretty hard to tell with the heat trimmer, but it looks like one stag and two spikers-ish. So, target, target animals. So, <laughs> I'll try and make a move on them. Um, hopefully the wind stays somewhat constant. Yeah, so the wind's going that way, so I'm going to try to head up around there, down, back. Sort of go sit and circle them. I wasn't expecting that. They're only about 60 metres away. But I kind of feel like deer would be nicer. amazing <clears throat> they're still only about 80 meters away but now that I've seen deer I'm more keen to get a deer than Chevy <laughs> even if we don't get a deer it's so cool um it's awesome just to watch those so the Chevy are just starting to saddle across the street there and the deer are down there so I think I will saddle across the street and then down the other side of that ridge hopefully get down on them all right now I'll saddle across here So it's just on there at 600 metres, so I should be able to keep saddling around here, go down to the river, cut across onto them because the wind's still going that way. So it looks like there's like quite a, a small mini point, like 10 or 12 or something, and then maybe an 8 or maybe 10, but still quite small. So if I get a chance, I'll go for the what looks like a 6 pointer. That big stag actually looks kind of flat. He looks it's still quite short but lots of points i think he's 13 or something it looks like four on one side and three on the other top and it looks like he's got both the brow thingies tines uh but it looks like he might go about the biggest next year so i'll shoot the smallest one if i can <laughs> final approach 
I've just gone out of sight behind there. It's a very good wind at the moment. About 300 meters away, just around the ridge. Oh, there's lots of, oh, there's a whole lot of them. Holy cow, there's a whole lot of stags. Which was the massive one that I saw. Yeah, that one's the petty boy. He looks hot. Yes, I did a big old stalk. I was up there when I first spotted them, I walked all the way around there and then up onto that ridge, sidled across there 600 metres away from them, <clears throat> or from here, and then down into the valley and then stalked onto that little rock there. And then I headshot him at 100 metres. Yeah, so let me know in the comments what you think about those uh, bigger stags. I didn't think that they were that long, otherwise I might have shot one. <laughs> Because there were lots of points. I saw lots of points, <laughs> particularly on two of them. Um, yeah, let me know what you think, what, how fast do you think they were? Because this one's longer than I thought it was. Um, just a seven pointer, but the velvet's still a bit soft. Uh, but it's going to be great eating. Uh, so I might have some lunch and then do the pack out. It's still about 10 kilometers away from the hut, so it's going to be a long one. <laughs> Very soggy feet. Maybe I can dry my boots out of it. Got some peanut butter and Orange marmalade sandwiches for lunch. Got the meat cooling in the bags. It's completely clagged, clagged in. So I'll just go get some water and then, well, the meat cools off a bit more. Right, uh, it's 6 30 now, just heading off. It's 10 kilometers back to the hut. Probably get there just after dark, maybe 9 30, 10 o'clock ish. But thankfully, it's just down the hill and then along the flats. So, it should be pretty easy. It's heavy. <laughs> Alrighty, down the valley. <laughs> Did we sir? Um, it's a bit fluffy. Man, I am sweating buckets. <laughs> it got pretty gorgy back there. So I'm sort of saddled, saddled up the side now. And um, yeah, only gone one, like one kilometer. It's been a bit over an hour. <laughs> So Arvid and I developed a method to help us decide whether or not to shoot an animal um, quite a long time ago, maybe a year ago, and it's called the Ngaw value. <laughs> and it's an equation, and you work it out by the flatness of the trophy multiplied by the succulence of the meat divided by the distance to the hut. And in this particular case, it was very far from the hut, so a small Ngaw value but uh, it was a fairly big flatness of the trophy 
that the succulence of the smaller one outweighed the flatness of the trophy. So that's why I shot the smaller one. Bugger! One times ten loon, cut into stir fry. That's not making the right noise, is it? It was a hard walk out yesterday, got back to the hut just before 11 or so. Um, there's some people sleeping in the hut so I just took everything outside to have some dinner. And then, pretty good night but everybody got up at 6 o'clock. Ridiculous! Uh, so I sort of woke up then too, but then uh, went back to sleep after they left. So I had a bit of a sleep in, then I had a cook up and now it's 12 o'clock, just gonna head out. <clears throat> it's looking kinda hot unfortunately. <laughs> right, so it's just 8 kilometers back to the car. This might take a while. <laughs> Oh boy, made it to the car. I'm a lot faster than I was expecting, did about 3km per hour on the 8km back to the car. But yeah, that was a super cool trip. I uh, really enjoyed it. It was awesome to see so much game um, and get so close to the chamois. Uh, so close to those pigs too, but they sort of disappeared pretty quickly. But yeah, if you enjoyed this, if you enjoyed this episode, please like the video and subscribe if you like it, and I will see you next time. <laughs>